I want you to confide in me when you have problems. You see, I call this meeting because I have observed that you are not relaxed in this house. So what is your problem? I don't have a problem. I don't have any problem whatsoever. I have so many things to say, but uh, this is not the right place to say it because you called for this meeting. I'm just here to listen to what you have to say. You chair the meeting, say everything. I will just listen. I will save mine for another day. You see, when I look at you lately, I see the picture of a young man that has been consumed by greed. And it's not good for you. So I want you to retrace your steps before it is too late. Noroka, you are nowhere close, right? Nowhere close to advise me on what to do. Because you know nothing about success. You know nothing about making it in life. So don't advise me. Let, let me ask you a simple question. You've been in this furniture for God knows how long. What do you have to show for it? Nothing, not even a plot of land. If your late brother didn't die when he died, where would we be living now? Where? Uh, Ferdinand, wait, 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 wait. Are you aware you're talking to our father? Huh? How can you address our father as Noruka? Anthony, the next time I speak and you cut into my sentence, my statement, it won't be good for you. No, I didn't mean to cut into your statement, but what I'm saying is that you should address our father with respect. You know what? Let me just leave both of you in this meeting. Continue in your meeting of poverty, backwardness, and stand still. Because I am a go-getter. I know what I want in life. I go out there and I get it. I know about determination and being focused. And that is where I'm going. Stay here and wallow in poverty. Look at this house. One day I will get my own house. I'll see you when I see you guys. Papa, don't worry. I will, I will. I'll talk to him. Don't even bother your brother. Let him wallow in his ignorance. Let me tell you something. Those who don't agree will eventually agree. And when they do, they agree better than those who agreed right from the very beginning. Yes, Chief Ibanugo is my brother, but we don't really relate like brothers, you know, like siblings. Babe, that is what I'm trying to understand. How is that possible? How can you have a millionaire in your family and you not see it? You are at the bank of a river. Why would you decide to use your saliva to wash your hands? It doesn't make sense. What are you doing with Anthony? Wait, I don't understand what you're driving at. Are you having problems with your younger brother? For the fact that you're even asking me that question, I think is an insult. Because as low as my status is, I'm even on a better level than that idiot Anthony. Yes, yes I am. Let's think on a big level. Think like people of your caliber, babe. This your advice is totally misleading. So you're telling me to leave your younger brother? People say it's a woman's world. I say it's a man's world. You know why? Because a man can do anything in this life and get away. Women cannot. There are certain things you do in this life and society doesn't agree. They don't like it. So what happens? A woman goes down and under till death. Do you, do you understand what I'm, t I'm trying to tell you? I do not understand because I don't know where I come in in all this. What's my role to play? I don't get it. You have a millionaire in your family. That's the bottom line. You, 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 you need to realize that and start to roll with people like us who are determined to make it in life, who want to succeed. Let me show you the way, babe. You don't need an idiot like Anthony who doesn't know what success is about. I know it. Let's roll. Leave this idiot because he will sink you down with him. That's all I'm trying to say. Think about it. Think about it. I'll go make some money. Papa, it is 
business is not one-sided. It's not. Look, I have assessed this business. Let me tell you what they do. What these people do, they go to Nkano and buy baskets. Then they transport the baskets to the north. When they get there, they sell the baskets and use the money to buy cows. Papa, there is plenty of money in this business. That's why uh, I was hoping you'd be able to, you know, assist me with some money. Let me see if I can join the business. I know that I have, you know, I believe it that I'm going to make it. I know. And that's what people say, especially when they hear of new business. No, 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 Papa. I'm not saying this to impress you. I'm not. Okay, go around all the abattoirs in Onicha. You'll find out that up to 1,000 cows are being slaughtered on a daily basis. Calculate it. Chike himself told me that there is plenty of money in this business. Sometimes they buy one cow for as low as 10,000 naira. Calculate it now. You see they are making money. Well, you know I don't have money. But if you are very sure of this business, we'll find a way of raising some money and give to you so that you can start it. <laughs> Papa, Papa, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. There is money in it, I am sure. I mean, look at Chike now. Chike hasn't been in this business for up to one year. He's already building a house in 3-3. I want to join this business. I know I'll make it. I know. Business. <laughs> okay, but let me tell you something. Do you know that you can go to the north, buy the cows, put them in a lorry before you get to Onisha? They're out there. Eh? I mean, if it is borrowed money you use in starting this business, what do you think about it? I, I'm very happy that you've given me audience this morning, uh, but I must apologize for coming to you with my troubles. Uh, I've been to your office several times to meet up with you and, and share my problem, but unfortunately, I never met you. And I know it's wrong for me to come to your house, but um, I'm desperate. That is why I'm here. So um, uh, please forgive me, sir. Well, oh, it's all right. You're, you're welcome. Um, sit down, sit down, sit down. Thank you very much, sir. Sit down. Sit down. You know, I was very, I was, I was very impressed when I spoke to you on the phone. You know, I am not surprised that you went all out to uh, to find my number to get this appointment. Um, I'm not going to ask you how you got the number. <laughs> okay. Because I know you, you young people, ah, you will go to any strange length to get whatever you want. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Um, well, the problem we have now is that um, I don't like doing business at home. You go to the office, meet my manager. Um, I can assure you, I would have called him before then. Everything, he will handle it. Be rest assured. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. But uh, I was hoping you could handle my situation personally because I know how managers can be sometimes. They, they can push you around, more especially if, if it is their chairman that sent you. They sort of use their position to manipulate the situation. So I really hope you could personally handle my situation. I know you used to be close to my father. I, I'm not sure what happened. Who told you that? Your father? Well, not directly. I, I saw a photograph with, with you and him back in the day during the war. So I just assumed that you were close to have taken a picture together. Mm -hmm. I'm just pleading, Uncle, please. So, um, what do you want? Uh, to, to cut the long story short, knowing that you don't do business in the house, um, I'm trying to succeed in life. Um, it's very difficult because... Anthony, what has come over you? Gosh, I cannot believe this. Are, are you saying you don't, you don't have good plans for yourself? Yeah. What else do you want me to tell you now? Huh? I told you that I've already concluded plans with Chike to start importing cows from the north. What else do you want me to say? Look, if you have this money, give me. My father cannot help me because he doesn't have money and I know. But... You have to impress me with your business plans before I can assist you with money. How can you think of selling cows, going to the north to buy cows? Cows! Why don't you just think big? Think of something else. Think international. Uh, uh, international? Is it not money uh, they used to do international business? Where will I get the money from? 
bottom line, I don't have money. And I can't start breaking my head because I want to be like other people. I don't have money. Well, I won't kill myself. Don't you see those guys in the main market that go to Asia for business? Why don't you become friends with them? Be friendly with them. Those friends that can help you. Why must you see only Chike that trades on cows? Look, I am seeing only Chike. Only Chike because there will be no customs to seize or impound cows. The business is straightforward. And let me tell you, don't underestimate Chike. Don't just underestimate Chike. Chike is already building a house in uh, where, where is that? In 33. Yes, he's making money. Big money. <gasps> God. Anthony, you know, I actually accepted to become your friend because I thought you had something upstairs. And I can tell you that I am well loaded upstairs. Well loaded. I can't start telling you lies just to impress you. I can't. Listen, listen, listen. Please. Give me this money. If you have this money, give me and wish me well in business. Then sit back and see how well I'll do in this, this cow business. There's money in it too. I'm telling you, there is serious money in this cow business. At least if I don't know any other person, I know Chike. He's building a house in 3-3. So, there's money. Please. So when are you coming up with your first turn? Which, which first turn? I, I I thought you were going to give me the money. The, the minute you give me the money, I will I will just supply you in the shortest possible time. I should give you money? Are you sure you know this business? What, what do you mean, uh, Mr. Manager? I I thought you were going to give me the money so I can I can I can supply you. I know where quality goods are. The minute you give me the money, the money hits my account. I will bring you the supply, and even those who've been supplying you, you will realize that theirs is, is not good quality. Mine is top notch. Just pay me, and I supply you. Do you know I left everything I was to do? Came in here, sat down to listen to you because you came with a letter from the chairman. Yes. Now that I've listened to you, I can tell you authoritatively that you don't know this business, you are not ready for this business, and I'm actually thinking that you're wasting my time. What, 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 what do you mean by that? Your, 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 your chairman gave me this letter that I brought to you because I, I, I know my capabilities. I was able to convince him and he was impressed with what I can do and that's why he gave me this letter that you should, you should um, you know, do, do, do what he says. You impressed him and that is the reason why he wrote this letter. In this letter he said that I have to treat your case with urgency that it deserves, that I should pay you upon delivery. He never said I should give you money. He can't even say that because he knows that is not our standard. We don't operate that way. Sorry, are you saying that I should supply this big company materials and then you pay me back afterwards? Where, 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 where am I going to find that kind of money from? Where, where am I going to get it from? Without your statement, I stand justified when I say that you don't know this business. You are not qualified to even come here in the first place. Listen to me. What you have to do is to go and look for money and come up with a supply. As long as your supply is good, exceptional, then you can be sure of your money. Even if you supply goods worth up to one billion naira, the rest are sure that you are going to be paid. Money is not our problem here. We have excess of it. But you must make supply first, then we can pay you. Okay, if, if you say money is not your problem, it's the same thing whether I, I supply you first and you pay me back. You could, you could equally give me the money and then I supply you. Money is not your problem. Just let me have the money and then I will... I know where the good goods are. Ferdinand, we have a standard that we follow. You are not qualified to walk in here to change that standard. I don't have the money now. You go and suffer. Yes. Well, have you seen the young man I said to you? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I, I have seen the young man you sent, and uh, I have already told him what to do, sir. Um, try as much as possible to give him required assistance. You see, his father and I were in the army together, and um, I really would like to help his boy. But um, make sure that um, make sure of the quality he supplies before you pay him. No problem, sir. Already I have told him how we operate here. He knows how we work. Good. Feel free to get in touch with me whenever the need arises. Noted, sir. No problem. I sincerely appreciate it. 
Vas. See, as a brother, you should be rest assured that you can confide in me. Tell me what your problems are, and we can handle them as men from the same village. You see, I don't want you to seem as if I'm complaining from place to place. The thing is that Ferdinand, my son, is turning to something else. So I want you to call him, talk to him, advise him. You are the godparent, so you really need to bring him closer, talk to him, advise him, especially when he is going astray. I was with him three days ago. And all he said never suggested that he was falling off track. I'm talking of somebody who lives in the same house, in fact, by son. Eh? Do you know that Ferdinand called me this morning and told me that I was not even qualified to advise him just because, according to him, I failed to own a plot of land at Onisha. So you really need to bring him, talk to him, advise him and make him realize that money is not everything. If what you said is Ferdinand's offense, then I will tell you that he has committed no offense. He told me the same thing, and I saw reasons in what he said. Are you sure you are not the one that is encouraging him? Me? Encourage him? I never encourage him to say anything, but I know he's making sense. See, why must we advise young men? We led good life, but ended up being poor. So why must we encourage our children to learn from our examples? I know where Ferdinand is coming from. And it is only good that we leave children to do what their mates do in order to succeed. Okay, okay. Let me tell you something. Please don't even call him and give him this advice. In fact, don't talk to him at all. A point must be made. Ferdinand is now a man and is thinking as well. What we need to do is encourage him. I am his godparent and I'm happy with the position he is now maintaining. Ferdinand, I don't understand you. Huh? Why are you always calling meetings at awkward times? Can't you just... Oh my lord. Leave me to sleep now. Huh? You, you, you think those who have succeeded in life sleep the way you sleep they don't sleep like that they don't sleep much because they, they need to think up new ideas they need to come up with a plan they need to do things that will make them successful we need a plan Ferdinand I don't agree with you no I say no Benson Noruka our father is an honorable man and you always call him a dollar I say no stop it he's an honorable man what do you know about being honorable what, what is being honorable? What is it? What has he done? What has he given us? He's been in Onija for God knows how long. What has he produced? Nothing. How many years? A plot of land was going for 10,000 naira. Did he purchase a plot? And you talk about honorable man? 10,000 naira then is worth more than 10 million naira now. It doesn't make a difference. I don't even understand you. Why are you always talking against our father? Tell me. Wait, you, 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 you sitting down here, you. What have you been able to achieve? Tell me, you. Okay. It goes right, right back to you. What have you been able to achieve? To no, you. Because you're the one who always talking and, and making noise. You. The point I'm trying to make is, what has he been able to achieve? Because if he had achieved something, we would be achievers. Everybody needs a platform to start, something to, to, to roll on, to move on, to, to, to draw inspiration from. We don't have it because he's, he's, he, he's cursed. The man is stopping our growth, Anthony. We don't need him. That's why I'm saying we need to combine, put our voices together, send him back to the village, and then you and I, as desperate achievers, brothers, we strive on. Ferdinand, what did you say? Send our own father back to the village. I say no. I will not be part of any move to send our father back to the village. The village is, is a dangerous place, don't you know? 
He may get there and somebody will poison him and, and he dies and we, we become orphans. Even better. Even better. Are we not orphans already? Are you an orphan? Do you feel like you have a father? Well, I feel I'm an orphan. Who is feeding who? Does he give you food or you feed him? Is that the way it should be? Let's just get rid of this man. Push him aside. Push him over. I don't care. Let's get rid of him and his bad luck. We don't need to be pulled down because we need to go up. That's where I'm going and I want to take you with me. Ferdinand, I think you've made your point. <clears throat> I don't mean to disrespect you, but I don't want to be part of this. Let me see. Something must happen. I am not going to allow Benson to destroy me with his poverty. I must be a millionaire. Or I will die trying to be one. You disappoint me, Tonya. In this modern world, where men are buying cars and houses for their girls, you're settling for that pauper that sells cows. I never knew you loved me that much. What kind of woman are you, Seth? <laughs> Helen, it's not about loving meat. Okay, I'm, I'm not just the kind of person that loves money. Money is not everything to me. Listen, you know I have a millionaire in my family and I know what he's going through. I know what he's facing. Nobody even sees him as an honorable man. Nobody sees him as a noble man. I'm even wary of, of riches. That is not enough reason for you to fool around with a nobody. You have all it takes to get a very big guy instead of settling for that indigent. My dear, I value my Anthony more than those so-called big guys. Yes, I even prefer him to your Ferdinand who is so over ambitious. Anthony is the kind of man I want. He is a real man. He is straightforward. He is open. He doesn't hide anything from me. He is the kind of man I've, I've always dreamed of. He is what I want. Anthony has a very good future. And he fits into my own future. Enough. Enough, Tonya. I've had it. I'm going to call your brother and I'll tell him what you're up to. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Go ahead and call him. You want me to give you the phone? Besides, I heard he's looking for a new wife, so you can just go ahead and sell yourself cheaply to him. Then he will marry you and you swim in his millions. I can't believe you're saying this. For me, I am okay the way I am. It's Anthony I want. Final period. Now I can talk. What do you want? Look, old man, uh, you wasted my time enough. Alright? I have been thinking this thing through and I'm going to pour my heart out. If you buy a product, you buy a merchandise and you don't like it or it's not good, you can return it. It is about time we return you. Go back to your village. I propose you go back. It is time. Go back and leave us alone. Wait. Are you sure you are still alright? I am very sound. I am very correct. Now nobody sells a goat standing one place because the stupid goat doesn't stand one place. You have to find customers. Look, this is what people do in life. They don't even identify their own potential. They don't know what is good for them. Your hidden treasure is in the village. That is where it is. I can succeed here. It doesn't mean you will succeed here. Go back to your village and stay there and just leave us alone so we can stop spending money at the hospital. Deal with some herbalist. Well, I'm sorry to say this. If you continue like this, I might be forced to place a curse on you. Place a curse on me for what? It won't even work because you have no money. Anybody who has no money, the curse will never work. So I'm not even afraid. And I'm telling you that you need to go back to your village. These are the problems we have in, in, in life. People don't know where to place themselves. Their priority. Go to the village. That is where you belong. This is my time. It's my generation. I need to succeed. I need to sort myself out. You've been in Onacha for God knows how long. What did you bring? Nothing. Return. By the time what you are planning matures, 
you are going to be the one that it will consume. I exempt your brother and I also exempt myself. You are digging a pit and you are going to be the one that will fall into that pit. Do you understand? I okay. My own. my own is for you to go back to the village. Go back, that's where you belong. You've wasted so many years here. Now we have nothing to show for it. I don't know where the money is going to come from, but I, I feel it will come. For some days now, my palm has been scratching me, so I, I have this strong feeling that somehow money will come. But see, Chike, I need an assurance from you that this business is not risky. Please. <laughs> you see, I'm not going to tell you that this business is a very risky one, because it is very, very risky. The truth about this business is that it's very lucrative. There is money in this business. It is one business that brings excess money in 200% of gain. Are you sure? Do you understand? So, I mean, it's risky though, but it's, it's lucrative. Chike. 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 You're my friend now. I won't deceive you now. I know I don't have money. Somehow I know I'll find, but Chike. So, <clears throat> if, if I'm able to raise, uh, let's say, 100,000 naira. Uh, Initial capital, would that be enough? At least to start first. 100,000. That, that is a lot of money we're talking about here now. The 100,000 you're talking about can buy you five cows. Yes. I mean, you see, there are, in this, there are people in this business that are buying 20 cows today that started with just 100,000. No, no, no answer, are you serious? That, that money you just mentioned can buy you five cows. You see, Anthony, in this business, there are people who are buying 20 cows today that's just started with one. The most important thing is that you're coming into the business with the sole determination to succeed. And I'll succeed. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank God. I've taken to you the site where I'm building. Yeah, I've seen your house now. Every single penny you see me spending on that land was gotten from this business. From this business? I'm telling you, you came from this business. Okay, there are even the so-called meat uh, business. People that do the so-called meat cannot even boost of building the house well. I know now. I've seen. I've seen your house. Uh, so can I? I can join next week. Abby. Uh, why? Why not? I mean, when you're ready, once you uh, bring, arrange this money, you talk about. Uh, no problem. I'll no. give you all the assistance. You need. Uh, I, I don't have the money now, but somehow it's going, it's going to come. Yeah, it's going. All those those cows there, they they are all yours, eh? Of course, now we shared it okay. myself and one Alahaji. So once they take it, they are taking it to the other side. The boy. Come on, the boy. Listen to me over your actions and utterances. Though I told him to leave young men alone, but I called you in order to know what you said that made him angry. If I knew this is what the discussion was about, I wouldn't have even shown up. You sound as if you hate your father so much. It's not like I hate him. I don't hate him. But he's he is not a progressive human being. He he doesn't want to move on in life. He he's so stagnant. You know, and and he's got this bad luck thing around him that whoever is around him as well, the, the bad luck attracts them. And and I'm not for that. So so please, if he listens to you, can you just ask him to go back to the village so that I can live my life. Listening to you leaves me with the impression that you have a series of plans. Oh yes, I do. I want to know what your next plans are. I have lots of plans, countless of plans, things I want to do in life, but I can't do them simply because of him. Whatever is affecting him is now affecting me. His bad luck. I don't need him around me. I, I need to move on in life. So I'm just saying, Talk to him so he goes to the village and then we can move on. I, I can get, get good things in this life. Both in public and in private, I've agreed with you on a lot of topics, most of which are very unpopular. But I will not agree with you over this. If you know that your father's presence is disturbing your business, then take a leave. What do you mean take a leave? Leave Onitia and relocate to Lagos, Abuja, Kanu, Kalaba, Kutonu, or even Europe, like my son did. 
You cannot compel your father to retire to the village. Do what others do. Take a leave. Okay. You're just another negative man. Another negative old man. That's what you are. You, you people, you don't think about moving on in life. You think you've acquired some small thing and you just you are just happy with it. You, you, you just stay on that level. You don't want to aspire for bigger things. I do not want to dwell over this topic any longer. And I believe you heard what I said. If you are no longer comfortable in Onisha, then you leave. Uh huh, chicken. Uh, Anthony, um, I'm not within Onita right now. Yeah, I'm in 33 supervising my breeding project. Yes, yeah, no, fine, fine, fine. I managed to raise some money, so I am now ready for the business. Uh, okay, um, the bus leaves Headbridge before noon. Mm? You need to come to my house very early. Yeah, you come early. We need to take care of the money before the long journey to Sokoto. Chiki, which one is take care of money? Take care of the money, I don't understand. I've packed the money in my box. What do you mean? <laughs> Anthony. Okay, see, eh? Just try and come early to my house. Eh? You will not understand. I will explain everything for you in details when you come. Alright? You don't have anything to be afraid of. Okay? Okay. In this life, so much work to do. Of life lies in dignity. Make you not take, say another gets, make you first to get. If you first to get, uh, a dog will follow a pot belly man for one of two reasons either the man vomits or desecrates. Whichever way the dog stands to benefit. Chairman, that's why I'm following you. I know there are lots and lots of things that can happen that will make me gain i mean if i'm wanting 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 i stand to gain either <laughs> way <laughs> you know my boy the first time i laid my eyes on you i knew that you could be trusted thank you chairman and this is why i have decided to get you onto greener pastures thank you chairman thank you Something tells me you think you're living in peace. But I'm back again to tell you there's no peace for the wicked. Chairman, the lady standing there, she looks beautiful. But I think she's a witch. I need your permission. Should I get rid of her? Because I, I can do something. Just, just give me the word. They fly. The has no advisor, follows the cops to great beyond. You are convinced you're near, but I tell you, you are still too far. Chairman. Is she appearing again? I am still too far. What could she possibly mean by that? Hmm. Father Lord, I am calling upon your holy name. Father, I am asking for your direction. Father in heaven, you have made it possible for me to have this money today. And tomorrow I will be embarking on this trip with Chike. Father, I call upon your holy name. I beg for your protection. Father, you said knock and it shall be opened unto you. Seek and you shall find. 
Ask and you shall receive. Father Lord, I am calling upon your holy name. I know that I will embark on this trip and I will return successful in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I beg, I call upon your holy name. Send down your angels, Father Lord. Protect the driver, the car, the everything, the road that will ply everything about this journey will be successful and I will come back with everything working for me Father Lord. Be leaving behind I pray that you guide and guard over them. My father, my brother, I pray that you you send your Holy Spirit to, to guard over my family and my trip will be successful. Thank you in Jesus mighty name. I'm on my way. On your way to which place? Ah, <laughs> Papa, I told you I'll be going with Chike to Sokoto for the cow business. Yes, the, the boss leaves Head Bridge by noon. Okay, so you succeeded in raising some money? Yes, yeah, so Papa I was able to raise something small. Let me go and try now. Okay, my son, I wish you well, eh? Thank you. Well with you. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. Go in peace, eh? Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Old man, you are still here? Do you see the sun? I thought by now you would have packed your things and gone to your village. What are you still doing in this house? You see, you will eventually have your own children and they will be disrespectful to you the way you have been to me. Can you stand before your father's grave and repeat those lines? You cannot because you know nothing about success. You don't know how to succeed in this life. You see, me, before I bring my kids into this world, I would have planned for it. I will plan for them how many I want and everything they need in this life, they will have it. Because I will be prepared. You weren't prepared. You were just born in. Just, just like that. You know nothing about determination. I said, pack your things and go back to your village. Return! Let me tell you something. Your children will eventually insult you the way you have been insulting me. They will insult. In fact, I regret ever having you as a son. I regret. I regret being your son. Why? Because you have given me nothing. What have you given me in this life? Your late brother's house? Or what? Clothes? Even food to eat. I am the one that will give you money to eat. Have you given me money? What do you have? What do you have in this life? Nothing! Who should regret? You or me? I don't even know what to do again. Don't tell me anything. Sure, go, go, go. No, no, you go! Go! Go to the village! As you're entering the house, put it down. Pack your thing and go to the village. Ewa hey, anum pam. What do you are? You tell me that anum pam. I don't understand. You. What do you mean I should go in there and take all my money and give to your life? Why? I'm asking you to give them money because that is the best thing for you. I don't understand this one. So if I take my money and give him, how will I buy the cows when we get to the north? Okay, Anthony, calm down. You see, it is no longer advisable for anybody to travel with money these days. Do you understand? All you need to do is give the Elijah money here. He will give you a paper. When we get to Sokoto, the Elijah in Sokoto there will give you the money once you present the paper to him. That's all. Just like that. Just like that. I'm talking about wasting time just for nothing here. I mean, you should have used the money to package, to, to, to ship all these baskets down to Sokoto for packaging of sea tomatoes and for transporting down to the south and to the east. You say you don't want to try that kind of business. Now this is the business, I, this is what I know how to do best. This is what we do. Give him the money and let us go. But let me tell you something. I will never allow you to travel with cash. Put that in your mind. But, 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 but wait, wait, you, you didn't tell me before now. Did you tell me when we were in the house? Did you tell me if we get here, I'll take my money and give to a lad? You didn't tell me now. Bring this money now. Wait, wait, wait. It's not my money, wait. Yeah, I don't understand this thing you're saying. You didn't tell me before in the house. No problem, you trust me. Okay.
Hello. Okay. I can't find the money. What do you mean you can't find the money now? I don't know. What do you mean you can't find the money? I'll just give it to you guys. What do you mean you can't find the money? See, 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 see. Okay. If you're not ready for this business, tell me and let me get it. Okay. 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 What do you mean, games? I put my money here and I got it. I cannot solve your problem until you tell me your problem. I know I told you that I work with the spirits in order to control other spirits. But I have not told you that I am a spirit myself. Sentawa, I am beginning to have double mind about uh, this your continuous claim of having control over spirits. You call me here to insult me? Santawa, I am not insulting you. I paid you all the money that you asked for. No. I mean, you tell me why, after you have assured me that you have caged completely Magdalene, why is Magdalene still appearing in my dreams? I asked you a question before, and you refused to speak. Now, I am asking again, what did you do with your wife? What business of, is it of yours, what I did with my wife? You are only an ordinary spiritualist who, who says that he works for other spirits. Then do the work, face the work, and do it properly, instead of poking your nose into private affairs. Chief, you can intimidate others when you open your eyes, but you cannot intimidate me. If you want me to cage that woman and stop her from appearing again, then you must tell me what you did with your wife. You must! Why have you suddenly become afraid of a woman you married to make yourself? I am still not impressed with the caliber of friends you keep around you. Like the one you had today. Finally, ask credible question. You must answer that question. You must open up and tell the whole world what you did with your wife. You must open up to my family. My family are waiting to have for you to tell them exactly what happened to your sister? And you must give them that information in peace, or you will give it when you are operating in peace. I used to love that girl, but I now hate her. Chief, this is not a good day for rhetorics or complaints into love and hate and hate and love and all that. I don't know how to tell you this. But I must tell you, we have something big. Something very big. Something very, very big in our heads. Something big as what? Look, Santawa. I'll give. I'll pay any, 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 anything. I'll give anything. Now I want you to punish Magdalene. Banish her, that woman. Confine her back into her grave. And send her sealed forever. Into the, into, into, into the golden casket I ordered from Canada for $100,000. Chief. But you buried her with expensive stones instead of ordinary sand. It's of no use to me. You must tell me. You must! You must tell me what you did with that woman. You must! You must! You must tell me what you did with your wife. You must. You must. Feta! 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 You're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. You stay here. We stay in the same room. You must tell me what happened to my money. Look at this small boy talking to me like that. Huh? Let me understand one thing between both of you, let me understand this. Are you looking at me as a thief? Nobody is saying that you are a thief. 
what he's saying is that both of you live in the same room together and it is only natural that you should ask you whether he, you saw his money and i'm saying i didn't see the money i didn't see it why are you asking me so what happened if, to money? if look, look if anybody should, should be stealing somebody's money it's you guys if there's any money in this house it's in my pocket why why would i want to take your money do you have money there's no money in this house of laggards now listen to me if i want to steal money from someone it will not be from this brat uh, fine fine call me a brat i accept if you want to kill me kill me but here you're not going anywhere you must tell me what happened to my money because i put that money in my box and it cannot develop wings and fly it's not possible if you think your money didn't develop wings and flew away then maybe you should ask this old man ask him we have three in the house pose the question to him no, 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 wait, wait, Ferdinand. Are you implying that I opened his bag and stole his money? Are you implying that I opened his bag and stole his money? Do I look like a thief to you? Oh, you getting you you getting angry now because I've I've roped you in the situation? Am I the only one in this house? Anybody has money in this house is me. What what is wrong with both of you? I give you money to eat. Do you figure your thing out and leave me out of this? Come, come, come. Wait, see, wait, let me tell you. Don't cry like those who don't have hope. God knows the best. He knows why this thing happened. Maybe he doesn't want you to go into the car business. Let's go in, let's go in, let's go in. It's okay, it's Anthony, it's okay. Let's go in, let's go in. I don't know much about him. Um, I know he's not the, he's not from this country. And uh, but honestly, I cannot tell you his country of origin. What I do know, or can remember, is the fact that we met at the airport. I was going to Jos, and he too happened to be going to Jos. We got talking, got on the aircraft, and uh, as it happened, his seat was next to mine. So we continued discussing. By the time we landed, we we decided we wanted to continue the the, the relationship. We exchanged telephones. He invited me to Calabar, where he where he lived, and uh, I I went, and uh, took me to so many places. I didn't know he was testing my determination. Anyway, the climax of it was that uh, I was asked to present the soul of my wife. That was exactly what I did. I gave them her soul. How did you do it? They, uh, they gave me a, a, a towel. But it wasn't dripping. They gave it to me and it was dry. Bone dry. However, they asked me to place it on her face when she was asleep. I did this, and in my very presence, her spirit rose from her body. And she never woke up in the morning. I sent for the doctor. He came and examined her and pronounced her dead. What did he say was the cause of her death? He, he, he said many things, but the most important one was that her heart enlarged and stopped functioning. 
Chief. Do you have any regrets? Oh. They took the towel from me. They took it away. Oh, I read many books on esoteric philosophy and metaphysical prisms. If I could lay my hands on the towel, I would spread it on her grave and she would stop appearing. Chief, I don't want us to go into the number of books you have read or you have not read. Let me tell you, in the occultic, one plus one is not always two. Different masters have different cosmic approaches. What may make one master happy could trigger up the beast in another one. But let me ask you, is there something they said you should not do that you did or something you were asked to do that you did not do? They asked me never to see another corpse after my wife's corpse. And for years, everything worked. I was making money. Everything I touched became gold. I know uh, bank managers were falling over themselves to reform for the accounts of my companies. Oh, everything was fine. And I, until I lost my child, and the body was brought home, my only child. I, I wept. Oh, how I wept. I wept so bitterly before the cops. And it was after that that uh, Magdalene, his mother, began to appear. How do I meet this foreigner who lured you into the occult? I honestly don't know. He no longer, he's no, he no longer lives in Calabar. And uh, we only meet every 21 months at our meetings. Uh, honestly, I don't know. I need to get to that meeting. There are things only him can tell me. Santawa, there has to be another way. I mean, we, we, we cannot wait to cross-examine this man. We cannot wait another 14 months before we see before before we see him and go through all this agony please there has to be i'm sorry madam don't see this as if i'm being disrespectful but cause it demands that when you are ushered into an office you sit down and introduce yourself do you actually want to tell me you don't know sincerely as in honestly I don't know you. I'm sorry if I ought to know you, but I, I doubt if I have ever seen anyone like you anywhere before. Make this easy for me, please. Who are you? Chief Iwanugo employed you after the first manager left, is that? And you didn't bother to find out why the former manager left this big company to manage a small hotel. Madam, I didn't bother to ask such a question because I am a professional manager. As a point of fact, I am a senior research fellow with the Nigerian Institute of Professional Managers. I have a duty and that is to turn companies around. I don't have to bother myself with the reason why somebody left the place. That's not my business. I am here running this company and I'm doing it to the very best of my ability, if you understand what I mean. Your chairman has not been coming to work. Do you know why? 
Very simple. He realized that he has a competent manager who is managing the company and he decided on his own to stay back in his house and monitor events via telephone, email, and other communication means. I don't know. You have not told me who you are. Why all these questions? There's a towel I gave to him. He has used it for so long. I don't know why he has refused to return it. I want the towel back. Madam, are you sure you know the person you gave your towel? Yes. I gave my towel to Chief Ibanigo, the managing director of this company. Just tell him that the Magdalene came to your office asking for the tour. Madam, please, Madam, wait. I, I don't understand what you mean. Can you break it down for me? You wouldn't make me to believe you are naive. Or don't you want to deliver my message? Yeah, Madam, uh, please. That's not the point. The issue here is that your mission is a known issue. I cannot discuss this very visit of yours with my boss. Yes, I believe, because you, I know you cannot lie. My boss may have borrowed your towel, but I can tell you confidently that he must have forgotten about it. So tell me the cost of this your towel and I'm going to pay you back. We cannot take this kind of trivial matter to the MD. You know what I'm talking about, towel. Do you think you can pay for the towel? Madam, as long as you are sure that it was a mere towel that you gave my boss, then I can pay for it. Looking at you, I know you, you, you don't go for any towel. It must be designer towel. So you tell me the name of the designer of this your towel, and I'm going to place an order for their latest design, their highest grade. It can be delivered in two days. Okay. Don't you ever try to join yourself to something that doesn't concern you. Tell Chief Ibanigo that Madam Magdalene came to your office asking of the tower. Don't you ever fail to deliver my message. Thank you. You see, this is what I heard about this man. Why is he bringing this office to ridicule? What is Tower that he will borrow and will return? Can you imagine a woman coming here to ask of Tower? Think, what, what kind of insult is this? I'm surprised that you and Anthony are the same parents. So of you don't seem to be in the same frame of thoughts. You don't have to be shy to say it. It's a fact. You don't need to be afraid to say that. We are not on the same level and we can never be on the same level. I mean, this guy, it's, it's not possible. Unfortunately, the person who is supposed to be able to help me solve this problem is dead. My mother is gone. I don't know how I'm going to know now. Well, I'm so sorry. What problem are you talking about? To be able to tell me who my father is. You think that bum walking around there could be my father? It's not right. Because I'm full of vim. I'm full of energy, persuasion, determination. He has nothing to show for all the lives he's lived on earth. Nothing. He can't be my father. My father has to be a millionaire somewhere. I just need to locate him. I'm so sorry, Ferdinand. But don't you think you're making irresponsible and reckless statements here? I mean, you're indirectly calling your mother a flirt. And that is unacceptable to me. You don't speak evil of the dead. I am looking at it from a different angle. Okay, my mother was a very beautiful woman. And there is no way that she could have married that man. I, I, I don't know what he could have told her to make her marry him. I mean, he has nothing to show. And ugly at that, he's a bum. It's not possible. I really don't know what he said to, to get her to marry him. It, I, I don't know. You know what, Ferdinand? I'm no more enjoying this discussion. Just drink up. I want to go home right now. Wait, wait, wait. Helen. That's not what we agreed. We didn't say that we were, you were going to go home. We agreed to come here, have some drinks, and then we'll check in the hotel room, remember? That's why I'm spending all this money. I'm not going to spend this money for nothing. We will go to the room. 
if I should go into this room with you, yeah, what can you do? I can do everything. Come on, don't be a child. We all know what happens in the hotel room when a man and a woman goes into a hotel room alone. That's what happens. Grow up. Huh? Chief, the only way we can end this circle of appearance is to give her a man. She needs a man, and we must give her a man. Magdalene has never been a flirt. What do you mean by give her a man? Oh, I'm going to use the extra terrestrial power of the Buddha Triangle. She needs a man, a young man, strong, virile. We will sink him into her grave. Oh. And he is going to keep her permanently busy in the land beyond that she won't have the time ever to get out here and disturb you. We will banish her permanently away from this place. Permanently? Permanently! Well, I cannot boast uh, of understanding what you're saying. But if you say it will solve our problem permanently. Permanently? Ever since I started cleansing this land of abominations and sacrileges such as you have committed, a chick has never died in my hands. I am going to arm the young man with the oil of Sutra and the rod of Pharos. And he is going to continue to wet her ties in the land beyond that she will be too busy engage with him. She will never appear here. We are going to punish her forever. Remove her from here. Permanently. Yeah. I'm sorry to disturb you, sir, but uh, something came up. Something like what? Sir, one Madame Magdalene came to the office. She came to ask of a particular tower that she alleged she gave you that you have used for only God knows for how long. Uh, are you sure of what you're saying? Sir, I am very sure of what I'm saying. Very, very sure. I asked her to tell me the price of this tower so I can pay her off. Because I never wanted to disturb you with such nonsense. But the lady said that I shouldn't, I shouldn't bother myself with something that doesn't concern me. That's why I'm calling you, sir. Uh, um, apart from the towel, did she uh, say anything else? Yes. She wanted to know if I asked the reason why the former manager left. But I told her that I'm a professional manager. I don't have any business asking why people left. I told her that I'm the person that is running this company now and that I am doing well to the best of my ability. That's what I told her, sir. Um, did she come alone? I need to verify that from the security, whether she entered the company alone, but I know she came into my office alone. Now I want you to listen to me. I don't want that lady around that company again, ever. If she ever finds her way into your office, do not, do not entertain her. Is that clear? Noted, sir. Hey, but sir, I, I, want to, I want to get something from you. Don't be offended. Are you keeping her towel as she alleged, sir? Look, you have been employed as a manager. I will appreciate it if you concentrate on that job. I don't want to see that woman in the company again. It is me she has come to see. And I can deal with her. Okay, sir. Dad, this, this man, this man is not well. But he's too well now. Is anything the problem? Mm, Santawa. We need that young man and we need him urgently. Magdalene has paid my new manager a visit. I have told you what we must do. We need that young man fast. And then we can sit down here and solve the problem. Banish her! Completely! Banish! Banish her! Permanently! Permanently! Whether it is Indian hemp, Canadian hemp, American hemp, English hemp, French hemp, Nigerian hemp, whatever nonsense hemp, is not good for you. Now, why are you parading yourself as a, as a security officer in this company and you're smoking hemp? Why? Fear, manager. Why, why should I 
smoke something that have been banned. Eh? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good security man. <laughs> then you prove it. And there is only one way for you to prove it. Who cleared that lady that came into my office a couple of minutes ago? She was the very first visitor I have this morning. And ever since she left, no other person has entered this office. Her name is Mother Magdalene, according to her. Who cleared her? Mother Magdalene. Manager, maybe, maybe you don't believe me. Oh. Since morning, I've been standing at that gate. Since looking with my two eyes, I did not see any lady come to visit this office today. But nobody. Security. Sir. Do you think I'm a fool or something? No, 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 sir. You don't think so? Now listen. The lady I'm telling you about sat here, right on this chair. She walked through that door. She wore a tag that actually proved to me that she was cleared from the gate. I am asking you as the chief security officer of this company, who cleared that lady when she came through the gate? Manager. <laughs> Maybe you are the one that has smoked the hemp. I beg your pardon? Uh, no, sir. Sorry, sir. <laughs> uh, should I bring the, the register so that you can cross-check by yourself? We did not issue or assign any lady with tag today at all. No, sir. Yeah, I got it. I remember the tag number she wore. As I'm seeing you now, I'm seeing her. I'm looking at the tag. Six, six, six. Lord of Jesus. That's the tag number. Who gave her that tag? Security man. Who gave her the tag? Tag. Uh, manager, maybe you are, maybe you are mistaking this place to be your, uh, the former company you are working with. Huh? Are you out of your mind? No. How dare you ask me such nonsense? I said, who cleared that lady? Sir, manager, that tag number six, six, six. Hey, is Antichrist number. No? Huh? We, we cannot issue such number from this company. It is not from this company, sir. Uh, our number ends in 070, MTN. Uh, uh, it's not even up to 100, not to talk of 666. Hey. <laughs> I did not see any lady with that uh, Antichrist tag, be it tall or small or dwarf, green, yellow. I did not see with my eyes. And the tag is not, we did not give any tag in this company. Security man. I can see you are doing everything humanly possible to smuggle in religion into this very simple discussion we are holding here. Then look at me. This place is not a church. It's an office. Yes. There is no Bible here. Now, I have my own idea of religion, which is different from whatever idea you hold on that same subject. Security man, if you don't mind. CZ. Get out, my friend. Hey. Sir. <laughs> No, no, no. What is going on? Does it mean I am suddenly up against the Antichrist? Antichrist? Is she a woman? Or a man? Yes, what is it? Sir, that Madame Magdalene is a form of spirit. And why do you think she's a form of spirit? I have reason to believe that she is an affiliate of the Antichrist, or possibly, sir, she may be the Antichrist herself. I have verified with almost everybody that's supposed to know about her visit. Now, sir, you, you won't believe this. The tag she wore when she came into my office has been confirmed to be fake. It is the exact label that they wear in hell. That is what they, that, that's what she wore to my office. The tag of hell, sir. Well, if she if nobody saw her come into the company. Now how did she get to your office? Sir, I was alone in my office when she entered. And I stood up. I welcomed her as a lady. As a commonwealth lady, I asked her to sit down and introduce herself. She sat down and finally, finally, sir, she talked about she spoke about the towel. I don't understand what is going on. 
And, and why did you think that uh, the tag on the clothes she was wearing uh, is direct from hell? Sir, I, 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 sir I, I'm sorry, but I don't know if you went to Sunday school when you were growing up. But I can tell you that the tag she wore to my office reads 666. That is the kind of tag they wore in hell. That is the number, the number of the beast of the book of Revelation in the Bible. That is the tag they wore in hell. The Antichrist that is coming to destroy the world, I don't, I don't know, sir. If our company has been labeled as the very first company that they are going to destroy or something, I don't know what is going on. Well, um, Mr. Manager, I want you to listen to me. Uh, <clears throat> there is nothing going on. Uh, Magdalene is not a spirit. Um, <clears throat> well, she's very harmless, actually. Um, yes, I, uh, she's very romantic. I'm sure you will like her. Hmm? Shaman, are you sure that this lady is so romantic? Don't pull my leg. I get this lady and she's nonsense. What is going on here? If you were Anugo employed you after the first manager left, is that? And you didn't bother to find out why the former manager left this big company to manage a small hotel. I am the son of my father and I refuse to be intimidated. I, I am not Antichrist. I don't know Antichrist. I don't know why materials of Antichrist will be flying around my office. You don't know me. I don't know you. I'm looking for guidance. I'm tired of living in poverty. I just need somebody to help me, please. I thought you were a spy. Spying on me. And that's why I asked my boys to beat you up. Now that I confirm that you're not a spy, I'll call you with the number that you gave me That's when I change my mind to help you. That is spy. And let me warn you right now, don't ever call my number. You understand that? Yes, sir. Boys. Yes, sir. Get him, boys. As humans, we are prone to mystics. I'm holding it as a huge mistake on your part for accusing Ferdinand a thief. Say, Uncle, I, I'm, I'm not accusing him for nothing. Ferdinand and I stay in the same room. So if, if my money gets missing, who else will I, will I suspect if not him? Yeah. This is natural, but not in all cases. Are you 100% sure that Ferdinand took your money? Can you stand before a deadly shrine and swear with your, with your life that it was Ferdinand who took your money? No, wait, wait, what are you insinuating? That Anthony doesn't know where he kept his money or that I in Noroka stole it? I haven't said that. I'm saying that Anthony must be sure that it was Ferdinand who stole the money. Because when the leg goes astray, it can be retraced. But with any pronouncement, it enters into bone marrow and can be referred to years after only two of them stay in that room there is no way money will miss without feeding and knowing about it 
I haven't known Ferdinand to be a thief. Anthony just told us that he put the bag in Chike's room and then entered his, his um, toilet to ease himself. Can we now say with every degree of certainty that it wasn't Chike who stole the money? I mean, why are you accusing your brother of stealing all your money? Please, I want this accusation stopped before it tears your family apart. Uh, Uncle, wait, oh, wait. Are you trying to say that it might be Chike that stole my money? I haven't said that either. But if the police are involved in this matter, Chike will be tortured more than Ferdinand. Because from the evidence within us now, he is the number one suspect. <laughs> Helen, yeah. when I told you I said, let's go to the room, you were doing Shakara, as if you don't know what's up. You are even worse than me. <laughs> you're good, you're good. You're a master at this game, you know? I hope you're not employing flatteries to make me forget the money. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not trying to flatter you. How much is this money we're talking about? It's not much. You know, you, you show me your talent and I will stick to my part of the bargain. Hmm? Mm. Hey, baby. Hmm? Sonia told me that her brother, Chief Ibanigo, is not an honorable man. Many people are saying he's into rituals. Helen, let me tell you something. Come from. Where does Chief fit in this conversation? You girls don't have anything to talk about anymore. Now you're talking about Chief? I don't see how that plays in this conversation. Can you just leave the man alone? Are you joining these poor people to talk about rich and famous men? Well, I did not discuss the man with her as a topic. We were saying something else and it came up. I'm telling you this because you told me you went over to his house to negotiate business. I just wanted you to be aware that he's into rituals and cultism. That's all. I went to his house to discuss business and nothing more than that. Why would you relate him to cultism and rituals? You cannot blend the two. Just leave the man alone. He's a successful man. And that is why I'm trying to associate with him. I only made an observation only because you're my friend. I don't want you to regret anything. Well, that's a very stupid observation. Listen to me, Helen. I am trying to succeed in life and I will relate to any man as a potential business person. I see them all as business people. So don't start saying nonsense about people that will change my life because I know what I want in life. Okay? Just leave Chief out of this. You're talking as if you're already getting on well with why not? Well, not just Chief. I'm getting along with everyone. All the big men, all the millionaires. The man is rich. He's a millionaire. And I will associate with him any day. I don't care. I will do whatever it is to be a millionaire because I know one day I will be a millionaire as well. Yeah. So don't be saying nonsense about such men. What? Hello? I've changed my mind. And I want to help you. I want to introduce you to business. Venice? Look, <laughs> look, I, I am not interested in this anymore. Listen, when I came to you the first time, I just thought that you were my only ladder to success. I don't think like that anymore, so just leave me alone. I am not the only ladder that you need to climb up. I am a good ladder, just a good ladder. I will help you. No, 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 Venice. You are not a good ladder. You are nothing. Why would somebody be introduced to an ocean and then the person will be interested in the river? Why? It doesn't make sense. Be specific, who are you calling ocean and who is river? Well, you are neither of them. You're not the ocean, you're not the river. You are a lake. In fact, you are a pond. Nothing but a pond. A dirty pond. That's what you are. And I don't want to be associated with you. Don't call my phone anymore, okay? I am listening to you because I know you're drunk. No, 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 Venice. I'm not drunk. I'm not drunk. I'm very sound. Very sound. In fact, when I came to you, Probably that's when I was drunk because I didn't even know my left from my right. Now I know what life is about. I know who to see and what to do. So I'm very sound right now. Okay? You know what I just confirmed? You are an imbecile. A total moronic asshole. You are the imbecile. Nonsense. It's idiots. I'm not so impressed with the level of hostility you're showing your friends. Hell, I don't know what's, what's, what, what is wrong with you. Have I introduced anybody to you as my friend? Did I say, look, hey, please meet Mr. Friend? Have I, have I introduced anyone to you as a friend? There's a lot of things about life maybe you don't know. 
I've learned the hard way. Okay, I went to these idiots to help me out. And do you know what they did to me at the point? They beat me up. But I'm still standing today. I still survived. And now I know what life is about. I know who to see and what to do. So don't even talk to me about friends. If you want friends, you can keep your friends. We're starting on a very good note. Why do you want to spoil things? Don't talk about Chief again. Chief is a good man. Vincent, you worked in that company before you came here to be manager of this hotel. And uh, I know you know certain things. That's why I'm here. Well, Larry, it depends on what you mean by certain things. I will resolve in my heart never to discuss that company with anybody. But Vincent, I am not just anybody. I am the manager of that company now. And I took over from you. I want to know the reason why you left. Must I tell you why I left? I met the company in shambles. Did all within my powers to revive it. It wasn't working. I did the honorable thing. Walked away. And for the records, I left on my own. Yeah, of course. I know you left on your own. Even in the company, we have records. Verifiable records that show that you were doing excellently well as the manager. I came here to know the reason why you left that company to come and be manager here in this hotel. Mr. Larry, there are certain questions you don't ask a man. But I must say that I... that the decision to leave that company was personal and I intend to let it remain so. Okay. Vincent. Do you know any lady called Madame Magdalene? Is she already working in the company now? <laughs> that means you know her. It simply means you know her. Well, um, I've seen the name. I haven't met her in person, no? May I know where you saw the name? Larry, why do you ask so much questions? If you're sick of the company, simply quit. You have the qualification and experience to get yourself a better job anywhere else. Of course, I know that I have the qualifications to get myself a better job somewhere. I know. I agree with you. But I have a job that I'm doing now and I'm doing this job to the very best of my ability. You worked in that company before me and I came here. Well, well, I well Mr. Larry, Mr. Larry, if you must know. I left that company because all of my laudable effort to revive it were only seen on paper. None, not even one, was translated into fiscal success. The height of it was that one morning, I got to my office and met a very strange letter waiting for me right on my desk. The letter was written by the said Madame Magdalene. She told me I cannot run where angels dread to walk. You cannot run where angels dread to walk. What does that mean? Honestly, ghost people covered my whole body when I read that letter. It became obvious to me that I was up against some strange forces. I told my dad about the letter and he asked me to quit the job. Now, Vincent, I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you a question because um, there are some issues that I've been trying to resolve since morning. And I want to know what you think. Vincent, do you believe in the existence of the Antichrist? <laughs> well, I think the right question should be, don't you believe in the existence of the Antichrist? 
You see what I'm talking about? That's exactly the headache I've been facing since morning. Everybody is talking of Antichrist. Larry, Vincent, why are you making a concerted effort to smuggle in religion into this very simple discussion we are holding here? Does it mean that you, as a manager that I trust so much, a competent manager like you, don't you know the difference between religion from simple science of business management, company management? Larry, calm down. Do I sense anger here? Why, why are you getting angry? I am not angry. And I can tell you authoritatively that I don't ever get angry. This man that they are seeing here, I have developed my telepathic energies, my telepathic parts. And I don't just get angry. I'm just concerned because since morning, everybody seems to be talking of Antichrist. Antichrist, Antichrist. Even you here now, we are holding this discussion, you are still talking of this I'm Antichrist. I don't know what is going on. Now, you say that this lady wrote a strange letter to you, Madame Magdalene. Can you look me in the eye and confirm to me that this Mother Magdalene is an affiliate of this Antichrist? Or can you possibly go berserk and tell me, confirm authoritatively? Or can you possibly go berserk and confirm to me that the same Mother Magdalene is actually the very Antichrist herself? Can you, can you say that? Larry, you are beginning to sound really weird and I'm losing interest in this conversation. I'm so sorry, Vincent. I'm so sorry if that is the impression that you have. I'm so sorry about this. But I just want to understand what is going on. You said that you came into your office one morning and you saw a strange letter right on your table. And this letter was written by Mother Magdalene. And then goose pimple ran down your body. And then your father advised you to leave the company. And then you left the company. Is that not what you said? That's exactly what I said. Do you have a problem with that? I don't have any problem, but you have to do me a favor as a colleague and as a friend. Go to wherever you kept that letter and bring it. I want to read the letter myself. Man, I, I don't understand you. How could I possibly file a letter my dad confirmed to be evil? What's wrong with you, man? Your father is not here. But automatically you have made your father to be part of this meeting. Because... Every time you're talking about your father, your father. I want to ask you, I want to know more about this, your father. Who is he? Is he a telepathic expert? Or is your father a native doctor? Is he a voodoo expert or something? And who, is, who is your father? You know, how could he possibly see a letter and then conclude that the letter is evil? Who, what, what powers does he have? Your father, I don't know him. Who is he? Your father, who is he? Tell me. Mr. Lowry, it's obvious that you and I don't share the same belief. And I must tell you that this meeting is over. Okay? I have to get back to work now. The company that paid you so much money is in shambles. And you're telling me about work. What other work do you have that is bigger than this work? Now I've got to get back to work. This is work? Have you said a nice No, 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 but, but this is work. I got you, man. Hey. How are you, brother? Hey, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Though. I didn't know you come to this hotel as well. Big men like you come here. Hey. I've tried, though. <laughs> Where the babe? Where is that girl? You couldn't have come here, look. I don't want to go into that, further now. My dear, please. Can you give us a few minutes of your time? Okay. I want to discuss with this man, old friend. No problem. Pleasure is on my side. Excuse me. Don't get choice, eh? Yes, manager. Chief Ibanugo told me that you are the son of his old friend. No, I wouldn't say I know him very well, but I know he's a rich man, he has money, and uh, everybody knows that. But if something else you need to know about him, you can ask me. I will give you the information for a fee. 
For how long have you known Chefe Banogo? I haven't known him for a very long time, but I know he's a rich man. That's what is important. Now, Ferdinand, have you heard of a lady called Madame Magdalene before? No, I haven't heard about anybody like that. But is she rich? She has money? Big, uh, well, maybe she's not even rich because I know what the rich people in this town. If she had money like that, I would have known her. I'm attracted to rich people. I just, I just know them. Do you know? That very first day you came into my office. Yeah. I concluded. I saw it clearly that there is something wrong with your psyche. You are still showing me that same impression here. I asked you a very simple question, and I want a very simple answer. Do you know any lady called Madame Magdalene, please? I don't know anybody as Madame Magdalene. What is your impression about Chief Ibanaga? I've already told you, Chief is a rich man. You work for him. I'm sure you... I don't even know why you're asking me these questions. He's a rich man. That's all that is important. And I know God will make me like him one day. That's, that's my prayer. Now, based on what you know, can you say that Chief Ibanaga is into occult or ritual? Can you say that? Why are you talking like that, Mr. Manager? Don't be like these poor people. Who, when they see a rich man, they just say all sort of rumors about him. It's, it's not true. I mean, uh, I doubt it. Why? Why are you even? Why are you asking me? I don't. I don't think he's into rituals. The man is rich, and that's all that is important. That's all I need to know. And then, you know, I consider this call that I made to you now a super waste of my time. If you don't mind, can you just go and join your girl? I want to take my leave now, please. It's not possible. You have to pay me something. Give me money for what? You wasted my time. You wasted my time because you have ended up telling me just trash. Can you just take a leave, please? I want to leave now. You bum in your car to ask me questions. You have to pay. You drop me where you pick me up from. I gave you all the money I saved over the years and you promised me you were traveling. So, what are you still doing in Onicha? Too many things are simply not right and it's getting me more and more confused. I, I, oh, I'm, 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 I'm so confused. Confused? Confused over what? Confused about the money you gave me. Listen, I don't have any other money to give to you. I gave you all I had. If the money I gave to you is not enough for you to start your business, then you better go look elsewhere because I, I don't have. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm not asking you to give me more money. I'm not saying you should go get money and give me again. It's just... I... I... I lost the money you gave me. You did what? How, how can you say you lost the money I gave to you? I, I know how incredible it sounds, but it's the truth. I was thinking it was Ferdinand, my brother, that stole the money. Then my uncle came and convinced me that Ferdinand is not a thief. It made me to start suspecting Chike, my friend, and that again is hard because... Ah, I know Chike. Chike, Chike, Chike is too big for such nonsense. He can't get involved in Chike. Chike cannot steal my money, and that is what is getting me so, so confused. I... Ah, I'm, I'm sorry, but I I want to believe you know me.
the father read the letter and advised her to leave the company. Is it because you don't have a father that you are running from pillar to post looking for the antiquities? Let me ask you to have what it takes to stand before the man that constituted himself the enemy of Christ. Madam, I sincerely can't remember telling you that I don't have a father. And for you to know that I don't have a father, it means you are not an ordinary woman. I can see that. But please, tell me the truth. Are you an affiliate of the Antichrist? Or possibly, are you the Antichrist in flesh and blood? Only fools make efforts on the efforts made by others. You cannot be smarter than the angels. By the way, who are you to succeed where angels failed? Wait, wait. Are you the angel that failed or are you the very authority that is forcing angels to fail? Are you? I'm very impressed by your zeal and your exuberance. Thank you. That I will advise you. Open your eyes and see before it becomes too late for you to see again. <laughs> but uh, my boss told me something. When I told him that you came visiting, he said that you are an expert when it comes to romance. And looking at you as you stand here now, I can see the reality of that statement. Because you look like the very romance in flesh and blood. Look at your eyes. Looking so sexy. You know, looking so honey. I am equally an expert in romance. And there are several things I can do when the doors are closed. You, you know what I'm talking about? Could you please give me your telephone number? You know, the sun is much. We can't say much here. Yeah? But if I have your number, there are lovely things I'm going to tell you over the telephone concerning love. You know, love. Love and hatred has a very tiny line in between them. Get to know the true color of the line. Then you and I can settle for the romance of country. Good day. This is one experience I want to have. To have the opportunity to romance the Antichrist in person or possibly <laughs> the chief apostle of the Antichrist. Antichrist is a woman or a man, whatever. last person I expected to visit me. I'm really surprised at your visit. <laughs> and uh, why should you be surprised at my visit? You and I were in the army together and uh, people knew us as friends. <laughs> or are you saying that I'm no longer your friend? Yeah, um, we were in the army together and you are such an excellent soldier. No. Well, but all that is history now. Exactly. We are now in different divides of the world. Uh, you never really visited me. You can't say you don't know what I'm talking about. Well, let's forget about that. Since you have refused to come to me, it is only natural that I shall come to you. Well, in any case, you are welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, Ferdinand, your son, is he in? Oh, you are looking for Ferdinand. I hope there's no problem. No problem. No problem at all. Um, he's my boy. We get on very well. Well, the truth is that I can't even account for that boy's movement. At times he doesn't even come home for days. 
But uh, in any case, I will let him know that you came here looking for him as soon as he comes back. It is absolutely urgent. Please tell him it is very, very important. As soon as he comes back, I'll deliver your message. Thank you. Well, well, I cannot live without giving you something. Um, for you. I am sorry, Ononeni, but you are sounding well. What exactly do you mean? I mean that man parading himself as Chief Ibuanugo is evil. He knows much more than what he told us regarding the death of my sister, his wife. You see, that was exactly what your brother said. Of course. But now that we are here, let me ask you this question. Do you really think that Ibuanugo was involved in the death of his wife? <laughs> you don't know him. I know him very well. He is deeply involved in cultism. My sister, before she died, was suspecting him of taking her womb. That was why my sister did not conceive except that initial and only child. You see, I don't want it to seem as if I don't want to understand what you are telling me. But let me ask you, do you think that Somebody can take away the womb of a woman and that woman will still be alive to say that this person took away my womb. Are you telling me that you do not want to believe me, Noruka? Believe me! It's not as if I am disbelieving you, but let me ask you this question. Did she really go to a doctor to confirm that her womb was tampered with? You know, we are in a civilized society. We can't be behaving as if we are in dark ages. It appears this man has brought you over, Noruka. But tell him that we must never relent any effort to see him punished. He is in ritualism. And whoever is there must never go unpunished. Tell him that. Yeah, I thank you for your kind gesture. But you can keep your money. I don't need it. You are refusing money that I am giving you from my heart? Uh, well, the truth is that you came here looking for Ferdinand and that boy has proven to be a very bad son who entered the mother's womb through the back gate. I'll let him know that you came here looking for him. You can keep your money. Thank you very much. I don't need it. In this life, so much work to do of life lies in dignity make you not take say another get make you first to get if you first to get I so you go turn and your head go crash I can sense deep, deep down those fears those crazy ideas on your mind let's not destroy the bond God has given I am, I'm very glad that you've been able to convince them that I didn't steal the money. I mean, I'm, I'm not a thief. But I, I'm here on a completely different mission entirely. Can you help me by telling me what you know about Chief Ebuanugu? Chief Ebuanugu is not a good man and can hardly be your role model. Why do you ask? Okay, sir, in plain words, straightforward answer. Is he into rituals or not? That's exactly what I'm telling you. His in-laws did not take part in his wife's burial. There was a general belief that he used the wife for ritual. My good friend, Mr. Nune, told me that he first took her womb. Then later he took her heart. See, they cannot assume this if they weren't suspecting anything. It's... is that the entire truth? But why are you suddenly interested in Chief Ibuanugo? He's an evil man, and if you continue to follow him, he will destroy you. He can't destroy me. I mean, he cannot destroy me. Men who get destroyed chose to be destroyed. He cannot destroy me. One, one more question, sir. Do you know the name of his late wife? She was called Magdalene, a very beautiful woman. Do you know what, you, uh, what is going on in your mind? Uh, no, I'm, j <laughs> I'm just trying to put some... Um, analysis together, you know, uh, as against what I heard and, and what you've told me. That's, I'll just, yeah. 
I'm interested in knowing what you heard. Well, for a fact, I can tell you it's not about you, sir. It's not about you. Huh. Look, men that are men don't take money from Chief Ibuanugo. I'm asking you, what are you doing with him? You know what? Uh, I, think, I think you have a problem just like my father. You, you refuse to, to, to move on in life. You, 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 you rather stay in your struggle forever. That's not the way it should be. Everybody should strive to move forward in life. I mean, the, the rich people, whenever they tell poor people how they made it, the poor ones rather stay poor because they don't have the guts, they don't have the heart to, to do whatever the, that person did to become rich. And that is, that is sad. But I can tell you, I'm moving forward. I'm here to, to attain the highest height. Anyway, thank you very much. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll see you around, sir. Thank you. Make you not take, see how I get. Make you first to get. If you first to get, now so you go turn, now your head go crash. I can sense the deep down those fears, those crazy. I still remember the lovely things you told me the first time you came to me. You promised to love me. You stood before the priest and promised and vowed to love me till that. You did not betray me. You betrayed yourself. You killed the woman you promised love. This world is vanity. And you, Chifiba Nugo, are in the center of vanity. I'm going to use the extra terrestrial power of the mother triangle. She needs a man, a young man, strong, virile. We will sink him into her grave. And he is going to keep her permanently busy in the land beyond that she won't have the time ever to get out here and disturb you. We will banish her permanently away from this place. Permanently. Permanently. life so much work to do the beauty of life lies in dignity make you not take say i'm not